celebrating especially the voice actors who, who uh, bring this show to life. Uh, let me bring them out. Guys, with us tonight, John Roberts, who plays our own
certain uh, kid, give him some cute underwear, or something, uh, his wife can, can uh, take off real quick, and uh, maybe like a, a Birkenstocks or... Birkenstocks. I don't know. Shit! <laughs> How about you, John? What would you design for the Zeke fan who had to have a Zeke-related piece of merch? A lot of underwear ideas so far. Uh, I, I, it's something with a Confederate flag, right? Like, I feel like it'd be pretty controversial, but I feel like Zeke's a huge racist. So. Do what? Oh, shut up! You, know, yeah. you just sound like it. Eugene, if you could design merch for the Louise fan, what would it be? Um, well, it would probably be bunny ears. Oh! Right? Oh, yeah. But they would maybe make, a, like, some sort of sounds, Louise sounds, where you press the ears, uh -huh. and then they make some great sounds. Uh, sorry, is that too, like, a thing you should do? <laughs> be, I, I think make, they already exist, right? Well, the ears, people are wearing them, but first of all, I doubt they make sounds. And second of all, I think they're homemade or bought on Etsy or something. Uh, I mean, they are excellent, first of all. They are excellent. I'm just guessing. I see a few, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, either that or, oh, maybe some sort of, like, you know how there's spy kits? Maybe I'd make some sort of, like, Louise mischief kit. Oh, yeah. that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah. Wow. I don't know why I'm not in business affairs. <laughs> Kristen, how about you? Well, I mean, A jean merch. Maybe... What? Yeah, a keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, that's the same guy. He keeps shouting out good ideas. Yeah, can we have that guy put to sleep? No, I like that guy. That's the merchandise like guy from 20th Century Fox. But maybe like um, one of the a pillow uh, where you go to sleep at night and you get in under the covers and then you put your head on a pillow and and with the weight of your head it plays one of Gene's songs. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. You're That's hearing, nice. not afraid of snakes. Yeah. Yeah. That's like torture. <laughs> not if you're to go to bed. You'll yeah. Not sleep. No, who wouldn't want to fall asleep to a uh, Grubin? <laughs> Grubin. Who saw the premiere? Good. That's what we were hoping. That yeah. the people who enjoy the show got to see the episode. We are, uh, we're very, very glad it's on television. You guys watch it on television? No. Because you know you should. Netflix is great, but I'm promoting this idea of television because I think it's going to catch on. Yeah. It helps keep our show on the air. Who saw the comic book? Who saw the comic book? That's not enough of you. <laughs> Uh, are they selling it here? I don't even know. Good. Oh, there's one. What, what are we up to? Is it two or are we up to three? Two, two. two. Yeah. Three must be coming soon. What's that? Waiting for three. Oh, you can oh, collect them all. paperback. Yeah. yeah, that's the best way to read that. <laughs> <laughs> nice to make that comic. I hope you guys like it. Uh, we brought some clips, by the way. Here is what we're going to see. Three clips. One in which Linda dyes her hair blonde. What? Yeah. She, it's not on purpose. Uh, it starts uh, as an accident. Oh my god, Tina. Gretchen does it. Yeah, Gretchen, Gretchen gives her I thought I was having a hallucination. The, uh, Gretchen gives her highlights, uh, or she's rather uh, trying to dye her uh, gray hairs black, and she accidentally uses blonde, and Linda says, just. Go all blonde. So that's going to be clip number one. In the second clip, or I should say, uh, she's uh, trying out a new role with Bob. She's sort of experimenting with a new persona. That's the clip you're going to see. Uh, because she's a blonde. Uh, and then we're going to see, I believe, Bob doing a little life drawing with Edith, character that Larry plays. Edith, the woman who works at the art, at, at, uh, the art supply store down the road. Uh, so you hopefully will enjoy seeing her naked. And then finally, uh, the kids interacting with a guy who works at kind of an upscale uh, food 
boutique called Fig Jam. It's played by uh, the very funny Andy Daly. So those are the three clips you're going to watch. I think they speak for themselves beyond what I already just spoke about. Please enjoy. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, ow! It hurt my eye. Yes, it did. It really hurts. Ugh, let me look at it, you big baby. Oh, I'm the blonde nurse! No, it's no, World no. War II. No. Oh my god. <laughs> the fantasy doesn't work. Why? I feel like if I got shot in the eye, I would want you to help my eye. <laughs> doctor, I'm a nurse, Bob. Well, can you get a doctor? Because I need a doctor. Oh, wait. I'm a doctor. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Whoa, okay. What's happening? What's happening? Knife drawing. If you can draw a nude figure, you can draw anything. Grab your charcoal, Charlie. Ladies are waiting. Okay, um, what, what do I draw first? The gesture, and then the essence, and then the breasts. I don't <laughs> see you drawing! Sorry, I can't look up. Harold, be my eyes. How's he doing? Bad. Listen, I'm trying. I just can't breathe right now. Oh, you don't like what you see, huh? It looks good. No, it's fun. Get used to it. It's the human form. It's the most beautiful thing you're ever going to see in your life. It's super yummy. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the big thing, the hair. <laughs> What's so hard to understand about? I saw the black garlic, but then I saw my spatula back. And when I reached for it, your black garlic got smeared all over my belt. Oh my god. Jean, put Tina on the phone. She's pretty big. It'd be easier to put the phone on Tina. Jean! <laughs> this is Tina. Tina, listen to me. Go to your mom's bra drawer and find the cash she thinks is secret. There's no money in there. There's no money. Take $20 and go to that specialty food market on 3rd. A uh, big jam. Uh, are there any other places we could go? It's the only place in town that has black garlic. Hurry, we're down to 12 minutes here. Dad hung up on me, but it's okay because I know he loves me. And he says we have to go to Fig Jam. Fig Jam? Fig Jam. <laughs> we'll take this dark chocolate bar with bacon and red pepper flakes, please. Oh, okay. That'll be 13 dops. What? <laughs> no, we're just getting white, so this should cover it. Here you go. You know, I think you three may be in the wrong store. Perhaps you'd be more comfortable shopping at the gumball machine at the gas station. Are you kicking us out? No, I am strongly suggesting that you take your business elsewhere. What little of it you have. Hm. All right, but when a rich John sets me up in style, I'm coming back. And you better not get a word on commission. And where'd you import this chocolate from anyway? Your butt? No. Yeah, and where'd you import these sea salt caramel crisps from? Your butt? Oh, Belgium. That's it. <laughs> Garlic Dad is gonna lose, our family will be dishonored. It's not like you've got a whole bunch of honor to spare, is it? No! <laughs> Three of our upcoming episodes. We have uh, the Halloween episode coming next. We have a Thanksgiving episode, of course. We have a Christmas episode. Uh, Bob's dad for the first time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's uh, it's a very uh, special episode. There's uh, something we love to do here, which is invite you guys up to that microphone. When that one too, we'd love to hear your questions. Why don't you guys start lining up? Because uh, we seem to never have enough time to do it, and I feel like we can't start it early enough. Go ahead, Red Hat. Justin, how has your role in like the videos like The Christmas Tree or My Son is Gay inspired Linda? Uh, my name's John. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Stories. No, uh, how did it inspire? Well, uh, just moms are, you know, I played a mom and uh, she's from the East Coast and uh, just starting with that voice and going from there kind of sprouted into Linda. So it was a really sweet, uh, organic kind of uh, thing that happened there that I never expected. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Justin. Here. 
Thank you, Justin. <laughs> I think you look like a Justin. I could be a Justin. I got yeah, you could be a rock Justin. Sure. It's true. You look like you were in a boy band like 20 years ago. Yes. <laughs> I actually auditioned and came very close. Really? <laughs> Wait, did you really? I kind yeah. of think you did. Really? I did. No, I did. What was the name of the boy band? And I don't know. <laughs> That's a good name. That's right. How about over here? All right, um, yeah, I don't know. thank you so much for creating a TV family that loves each other so much. Um, and you guys, um, like when you create the storyline, there's so much of it that breaks from stereotypical normative coding, coding, particularly like with gender. You break so many of the gender roles. Do you do that by intention or can we say it just happens because you're so cool? Uh, I'll say this as it pertains to um, uh, the sort of the casting, which helps inform the, the thing. Um, it's one of the great things about animation. You can mess with people in a, in a way that they expect and want and desire. You can have an adult play a child, which is you know a great way to tell stories about a child character. You can have a man play a woman, you can have a, man, a woman play a man, and it, it will make that character stand out if you, you know, if you get the right voice, and it will inspire better writing, too because you are going to be playing at the edges of, uh, you know, the character is going to be both a child and an adult at the same time by definition. And then what we do from there is actually just try to ground the thing. We're always sort of trying to make sure the characters act like people. Uh, and, and I think that gives you comedy rather than takes away because smaller things become funnier, I think, if you sort of buy this animated family. And, of course, despite the fact that they were voiced by men and women, and uh, none of them are children. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Sure. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Erin. My question is for everybody. Um, as actors and performers who have like very unique voices, how do you bring subtlety and difference to all of your characters, not just on Bob's Burgers, but in your plethora of work that you do? The way I bring subtlety! <laughs> exactly what he wants. And he wants us. He wants us <laughs> to do a great job. <laughs> that is correct. How about over here? Hey, my name is Benji. Um, just wanted to say love the show. Love hey, my nickname is Benji. <laughs> <laughs> um, this question is for everyone. Um, what's your favorite episode? You know, Lauren had a great answer for that, which was, I don't have a favorite because the, my favorite is the last one I did. And I really like that, so I'm using it right now. I, I, <laughs> Pretty I, boring. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that. I hated that. You hated that answer? I thought that. Yeah. I don't think you were what there. You're, really what you're doing is not answering. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Take one where it's like, where uh, I'm friends with the toilet, but there's like a lot of ones that are wonderful. That is a good one. I, I like the episode, um, where it's a parody of Jaws, the Sharkening, the Deepening. Jaws, the shark movie, did you say? The Deepening, uh, yeah, I, I like that one um, because uh, when we read it at the table read and when we recorded it, I didn't quite get the humor because the humor was really in the animation. And when I saw it, I was, I was ah, oh, that's funny. I thought it was gonna be a big bomb, a real stinker. And, <laughs> And we all know if it surprised me, then I, then I like it more. Yeah. I like the first one a lot. I like the one, was that, which one was that? 
<laughs> the one with the, where Bob gets stuck in the wall. Oh, oh the second one, yeah. Crossface. The second one. Yeah. I like that one a lot. And that's the last and the only one I've ever watched. <laughs> that's, that's it. No one else is allowed to answer. How about over here, Jimmy Jr., everybody? Oh, wow. Hi, everyone. I'm Jimmy Jr. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy oh. Jr. Hey. <laughs>